Hi world, it's the 30th of November 2020. It's time for a review and a reset. The madness of 2020 from an astrological perspective is over. It appears that the American election is drawing towards an inevitable conclusion. It appears that COVID numbers are, at least the numbers of deaths, are significantly decreasing. Hooray! The madness of 2020 is coming to an end. And then we have a vaccine, or number of vaccines. Hmm. It's going to be a matter of personal choice as to whether we take them or not. However, rather than get into an argument about vaccines, I suggest that we try out the vaccines first of all on the politicians and the scientists and their children and then if they're all okay then I might think about taking it but in the meantime let's try it out on these people who want us to take it and see what happens to them first. Meantime in the heavens oh yes it was um, full moon a couple of hours ago and everyone's been talking about oh it's an eclipse and I'm like, oh, God, here we go again. No, it's bloody not. Look. The mathematics of an eclipse are clear. If the North Node, in its position on its journey through the heavens, is within one, two or three degrees of the sun and or the moon at the moment of new or full moon, then we have a total eclipse. If the North Node in the heavens is within five, six, seven, eight, nine degrees of the sun or moon at the moment of the new moon or full moon, then we have a partial eclipse. However, if the North Node in the sky is as it was 14 degrees away from the sun or moon as it was this morning, then you might call it an eclipse, I certainly don't. There was no occultation of the moon. The moon might have dimmed in its glow in one or two spots towards the poles. That's about as far as it goes. Nothing to write home about, nothing major. However, the next new moon is a total eclipse. The new moon that's coming up on the 14th of December with the sun and the moon at 22 degrees, 23 degrees 08 of Sagittarius, with a north node is going to be around um, 20, 21 degrees of, of Gemini. So yes, it's going to be a total eclipse of the sun. And a number of places in the world will see it, at least partially, and many places will see it in totality. And this is a really significant eclipse. It doesn't make aspect directly to any planets in the sky. Well, it's trining Mars. It's also semi-sextile, Jupiter, Uranus, uh, Jupiter, Saturn and Pluto. But this is a kind of reset eclipse that's coming up in two weeks' time. It's a fresh start. Now, it falls right on top of the... Um, the full moon is right on top of the sun of Donald Trump. It's also hitting my chart, left, right and centre, and a number of other people's charts. So it does point to a kind of conclusion of a number of scenarios in 2020 that are coming to an inevitable end. <sighs> Personally, as well as globally. But at the same time, it's a new moon, even though it's a totally occluded new moon. As I was talking to my students in my classes the other day, the word occult, there's nothing negative about the word occult, it just means hidden. And when the moon passes directly in front of the sun, and as is well known, the sun is 96 times bigger than the moon, and the sun is 96 times further away from the Earth than the moon. Might be 92. But it's, um, it's either 92 or 96. But the proportions are precise, which is the only way we get eclipses. If the sun was not the same number of times bigger than the moon, but it is further away from the Earth than the moon, we would not get eclipses. 
Ran this is this is just coincidental random mathematic geometry if you choose to believe that i choose to believe something completely different in that i can prove that the placing and orbits of the planets in the sky is not random because the patterns the geometric patterns they create are mathematically precise and perfect big statement i know but I'm going to be teaching this in my second module, which will be starting in, no, my third module, which will be starting in April. The second module on the planet's places in the signs and houses of the zodiac starts in January. And uh, those people already on my course have been notified of this. I will be notifying the world properly in about a week and a half's time. The eclipse that's coming up in two weeks time is monumental. It's bringing a number of things from 2020 to an end, but because it's a new moon, even though it's an occluded new moon, it's also a fresh start. But it's a kind of kickstart and a full start at the same time, because four weeks after that is the new moon in Capricorn at 23 degrees of Capricorn, pretty much precisely conjunct Pluto, even though Jupiter and Saturn would have long left Capricorn by that time. And that is perhaps the most significant new moon of 2021. And I repeat something that I've said a number of times before, and it's become more and more obvious with all the readings I'm doing, and I am going to be stopping doing readings for much of December, for personal reasons. Um, it's clear to me from doing 20, 25 readings a week, which is what I've been doing this year, that uh, in 85% of cases, by the time we're into the middle of February 2021, the hardest times for the vast majority of people of 2021 are already past. 2021 is going to be a lot lighter year in terms of personal intensity. Of course, the global reset is going to be humongous and massive and the economic recovery from 2020 is going to take years. And in fact, it's never going to recover. We can never go back to being the way we were. And I, for one, am delighted by this. We're going to see a great deal more balancing coming in because stock payments, shareholder payments are going to be well down. The banks and the big corporates are not going to be making such ridiculous profits. And there's going to be a balancing. A number of big companies are going to be going bust. And some of them are really going to thrive. Those built on sensible economic principles who are not mortgaging and, and, and leveraging themselves up to the hilt in debt. Same with individuals. Those people who are being astute with their money are going to thrive next year. Next year is a very good year for 35, 40% of people. But those who expect to continue the way we always have up until recently and are just going to go back to the old paradigm are, 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 are going to find themselves becoming steadily and slowly more and more adrift next year. Anyway, we have had a, penumbra, a minor penumbral eclipse of the moon this morning. This took place at eight degrees of Gemini. This is not influencing any planet in the sky apart from a weak square to Venus, which I consider to be inconsequential. But it does suggest that it's a kind of turnaround point. It's a kind of plug being put into the bath. And we're all collectively beginning to dare to breathe a sigh of relief. Now that 2020 is beginning to show signs of easing up, leaving us alone and moving forward. Now we've still got a lot of things coming up in this next month. There's the total eclipse on the 14th. There's um, a rather pesky new moon on the 30th at eight, nine degrees of Cancer. That's not going to be that easy, but it will be sextiling Uranus. So it will encourage those who are looking at the future in a slightly more innovative and original way to move forward. There's also the movement of both Jupiter and Saturn out of Capricorn and into, Sag into Aquarius fractionally before the equinox. Just for the record, Saturn moves into Aquarius 
at about 5 a.m. UK time on Thursday the 17th of December. Jupiter moves into Aquarius at around 1 p.m. UK time on Saturday the 19th of December. So about 4, 54, 56 hours apart from each other. The equinox, the Northern Hemisphere winter equinox, Southern Hemisphere summer equinox, what am I saying? Equinox. The solstice. The Northern Hemisphere winter solstice and the Southern Hemisphere summer solstice will be on the 20th, 21st of December this year at 10.03 a.m. UK time. 10.03 a.m. UK time on the 21st of December. So bearing in mind that the government in their all seeing wisdom have decided that no one shall attend Stonehenge or any other uh, ceremonial Greek meetings. Fortunately, I'm aware of a number of small stone circles around the Britain that very few people know about. So I shall find one of them um, on the solstice. So I will be at some stones somewhere, but it's not just the solstice, Jupiter and Saturn and this blooming great eclipse that's coming up. Mars is now moving forward in Aries and Mars will be leaving Aries at the start of the new year, but within the first week of January. And it's just this impression I get that the more we get into the second half of December, brilliant new moon, a brilliant new moon, an eclipse, okay, but brilliant all the same. Jupiter and Saturn changing sign, Mars changing sign two weeks after. Uranus stops going retrograde in early January. Neptune stopped going retrograde a couple of days ago. We're clear of Mercury retrograde shadow. Venus and Mars are fantastically bright in the sky. Dare I say it? Signs of hope. That doesn't mean we can be stupid. It certainly doesn't mean we can't. We go back to churches and football grounds and mass shopping without wearing masks and, and all that. In decades to come, we're going to look back over 2019 and especially 2020 and 21 and see that as the end of irrational large scale consumerism. And for the benefit of the planet, not only humans, but every being on the planet, not a moment too soon because we are so out of balance. Okay, catch you later world. Bye now.